back to my channel. I hope you're all doing well. Hello, Benjamin. Say hi to the channel. Hello. Today's video is all about rest and recovery and this has been really requested since the amount of comments that I had on my weekly workout videos in terms of rest and recovery. And I thought I'd touch on it because it's actually a valid point whether you're training for an ultra or not. Rest and recovery is one of the things that I think people kind of forget about sometimes. So I just wanted to go over a few things today such as nutrition, hydration, sleep, when to take rest days, how to essentially not feel guilty, um, which is what I'm actually going to touch on first. Having a rest day, recovery, you're allowing your body to reset itself from whatever activity you've done. Now, this is really important to note. It is different for every single person. So my recovery and rest might be very different to yours. Mine's even different to Ben's. The amount of training volume that I'm doing for my ultra and the fact that I swam competitively for 10 years, I think my ability to recover is pretty damn good. Would you say that? Because I I was brought up, yeah. I literally trained nine days a week in the pool, five days doing land work, and I just had to recover. My body kind of had no choice because I had to go to those sessions. So my ability to recover, whether it's soreness, fatigue ability is pretty good and women in general we can actually recover quicker than guys hey. it's a nice little thing isn't it but yeah we actually recover as women we do recover quicker than guys i'm not saying it's like rapid but we do have that ability. So the way that I look at rest days now, you can either have set rest days or when you feel like your body needs a rest day, i.e. ridiculous amount of DOMS where you feel like you're not even gonna progress anyway. You're shattered, you're very fatigued, cognitive function, everything like that is in there, which is kind of the one that I get at the moment. I get really bad brain fog after those like 40K runs and I choose to take a full rest day. It's important to listen to your body, whether it's you're tired, it's injury, illness. Illness is another big one for resting. We answered this question in a podcast. You're not subscribed to the Not So Fit Couple podcast. It is linked to this YouTube channel. <laughs> this YouTube channel, my YouTube channel. Um, go and check it out because the podcast will be really beneficial for you. But yeah, I mean, there's, there should be no guilt about taking a rest day because at the end of the day, if you don't rest and recover, you're not going to progress. You're going to regress. This video is going to go live when we're in Florida, when we're in America, which is well exciting. We're off on our holly bobs, aren't we? And I'll speak to you. I want to get home. One of the things that I actually wanted to touch on as well in terms of rest and recovery, more so the recovery side, is actually mobility and stretching. Now, I personally don't do that much static stretching, so I don't really hold stretches too much. I tend to do more mobility work where I'm working on my flexibility, and in particular for me, because I am doing a lot of running, I'm obviously going to get sore and my joints are going to be sore. I work on my hip mobility most predominantly because I also have I, I do have a hip injury and I'm working around it it's really really important for me to work on this side of my training I think mobility is one of the areas that people tend to forget about it's maybe seen as a little bit more boring I'm not 100% I mean I definitely used to be that person before I started running so much if you get very very sore from just weight training or it is running whatever sport you're doing it is really, really important that you are looking after your body because at the end of the day, if you can help yourself recover better, why not do it? What I'm doing here is actually my hip mobility. Now, if you go back to one of the first, first ultra videos that I even spoke about, I'd already explained that I have quite bad hips, one in particular, and I was on an ongoing journey to be able to do my hip rehab and to get to the stage where I can work with an injury and not against it. I've been able to work my rehab so, so much that my hips have 
have actually, fingers crossed, been really, really good. One of the things I also do as part of my rehab is calf raises. I have a very, very weak left side of my body and doing calf raises is just part of my rehab. We are back from the gym and another really important topic of communication is actually to do with nutrition. With rest and recovery, are you fueling yourself properly, efficiently to actually be able to recover? Obviously, I know there's different circumstances when people's goals are different and they may be in a fat loss phase and they're in calorie deficit, they could be in quite a high calorie deficit or just a small one, whatever it is. I do you think it's really important to have a little look at your nutrition as well? Obviously, I will always recommend you hitting around 0.8 to 1 gram. 1 gram might be a bit too much of protein per pound of body weight. I personally have a very high protein diet and it's something that I have always had. I have around 165 to 170 grams a day, probably even more at the moment with the amount of food that I'm eating. There's an example. Since my running volume has increased so much, I'm eating a hell of a lot more. I need the energy, I need the carbs, I need the protein for recovery, for repair. And it is just one of those things that sometimes people wouldn't even think about their nutrition when it does come to recovery. This is my little reminder just to have a little think what you're putting into your body. Also a big point is, are you staying hydrated? Do you feel like you're getting like one liter of water a day, which probably isn't enough. You need to aim for more like two to 2.5 to three, depending on how much activity you do. And I keep saying, depending on how much activity you do, because I'm expending a lot of energy, therefore I'm eating a lot and I'm drinking a lot of water. I probably have like three, 3.5 to 4 litres a day. Again though, going back to my swimming background, we used to drink so much and it became such a strong habit that I, I do actually constantly drink water. And then we, we also had our pee tested, so we always had our wee tested to see how hydrated we are. So again, it's probably habits that I've picked up over the years. But I'm just making my oat bowl. I have 70 grams of oats today. Fueling properly. The oat bowl is literally always spectacular. So just putting powdered peanut butter on. I absolutely love powdered peanut butter. Oh my balls, literally just how much just put on there. Oh my goodness. Um, I love the powdered peanut butter. It's actually really, really great. Completely tastes like peanut butter and you, if you don't want a liquid, you don't need to have it. My code for my protein is Lucy D. It will give you a significant discount. So this is the bowl. Yeah, so, you know, really fueling myself. It's a lot of oats. The recipe is on my Instagram, on my reel. So make sure you head over to my Instagram. Follow me on Instagram if you're not already and come say hi. Okay, so the last thing that I really want to talk to you about in terms of rest and recovery is sleep. Now, I have been fortunate enough, and this is literally incredible because I shit you not, I've probably had the best night's sleep in the past three weeks. And I can also tell this because my boot tracks my sleep. In my life. I have been working with Emma Sleep. I'm gonna leave all my links and things like that below as well in terms of information about the mattresses. But I'm actually gonna try to give you a little tour. Okay, so these are the pillows. <laughs> it's actually trying hard to show you how there we go. The pillows that I have. Okay, so it's been three and a half weeks since me and Ben have been using them, I think. They're memory foam. And so I'm the type of person who actually sleeps on my left-hand side. And I'm trying to be lie on my back a bit more because when I sleep on my left, I sometimes get really bad cramp on my shoulder when I wake up. And these are actually the only pillows that I find really comfy to sleep on. So we've got all the pillows here, but these are just like really squishy. These are the ones that I used to use. But this one has been so much better. I wonder if I can just pick, I wonder which side. I'm just gonna show you a little bit so you can actually get what I mean. Can we see? It's like material here. So it's like memory foam. And then also, I mean, I hate undoing my bedding because I've got nice, fresh ugh, bedding on. But you can see the mattress here as well. So with this one in particular, with my old mattress, I used to wake up with a really bad back. I just didn't, I don't know what it was. I just didn't sit in it properly. And me and Ben just didn't find it the most comfortable thing. It's just the one we had when we moved in. And this one basically, we see here, it's just got so much more breathability and I've just been sleeping better. Like I'm not the, I'm not the best sleeper in the world because I actually wake up quite a lot of the time because I drink a lot in the day so I end up always needing the toilet which isn't ideal but I have found that I've been sleeping better over like the past three three and a half weeks when it comes to sleep obviously you'll usually hear people say eight hours is kind of optimum and to be honest it is like eight hours of sleep seven to eight hours and I know it's not doable for everyone but if you aren't sleeping you're not actually recovering properly I know it can be tempting to scroll on social media until 1am in the morning but seriously nothing good happens after 
half nine, 10 o'clock on social media. So get your phone off, get a good night's sleep, set up your nighttime routine, low light, get a comfy mattress. I actually do have a code for you as well, which is amazing that Emma did give me a code so you can get a discount. And this is extra discount on top of the discounts that Emma already have on their website. And these can be massive. So make sure you check it out and get those huge discount deals. The code is Lucy Davis Fist. I'll pop it on the screen for you and I'll link it below as well. It's only valid for a limited time. So if you do want to try it out, I mean, you've probably actually heard of Emma before as well because someone's also commented on my YouTube channel, but they're just so comfortable. You're going to get a good night's sleep. And if you do click the link, your discount code is actually automatically applied so the discount comes off anyway just so it's a little bit easier for you i personally go up to bed at around 20 past 10 to be in bed for half 10 so once i do my skincare things like that i've not been on my phone really since like 10 past 10 ish put it down i have an alarm clock so i've got a loomy light that i have separately anyway so i'm not really on my phone checking it and things like that get a good night's sleep and you're just gonna wake up more refreshed especially if you are pursuing a fitness goal a health goal performance things like that your sleep is so important and a lot of people just deprive their sleep because you know it's one of those things that we naturally do as humans we sleep we have to have sleep seven eight hours if you can some people function off five to six 100 that's i'm not saying that but the optimal amount of sleep if you can aim for seven to eight hours and maybe just lock this get off social media a little bit earlier and you will feel more refreshed i've already spoken about my root million times but i actually really do love checking how much sleep i get i had nine hours the other night i think it was after sunday after that long run which is caused the eye issues i had nine hours sleep i'm i think i'm i, I went to bed early though but still nine hours hours of sleep that was like significant just a really last important note as well in terms of your sleep one of the best things to do is have a consistent bedtime and an awakening time just so your circadian rhythm so your sleep rhythm is consistent and you'll find it so much easier to get up in the morning like who doesn't want to find it easy to get up in the morning like oh my god i used to really struggle but yeah i've been great <sighs> I can't go to sleep now i can't have a nap you know i've got shit to do um i hope you enjoyed this video give it a big thumbs up subscribe to my channel and i'll see you in my next one i think the next vlog video is actually going to be after my 16 days in florida in disney so that is going to be one of the most exciting videos ever make sure you subscribe and i'll see you there